people are desperately, desperately mm -hmm. trying to find their loved ones amid all the rubble down below, and uh, they've been uh, uh, just searching out there and waiting or posting names or, and, and, and pictures, pictures. On, on, on vehicles nearby. CNA's Greg Coy joins us uh, now. He is live in New York and has been there since this all started. Greg? You know, some of these stories are absolutely gut-wrenching when you stop and think that people are actually coming and waiting for their uh, 15 seconds of fame, not for themselves, but to show a picture of a loved one that hasn't been found since or hasn't been heard of uh, since the disaster on Tuesday. And we want to focus on one man from New Jersey, from Haddon Heights, Paul Demartini who went to such extremes to make sure that someone, everyone knew about his brother and maybe that they can find him, that he went over to the other side. They are driven by hope. If anyone has any information about him or if anyone worked with him or if anyone knows, like if they saw him last. Made desperate by hopelessness. I'm sure if it can't have it's Joe. 101st floor. Which he, that's it. They tape posters of missing loved ones on a news live truck. It's become a sea of faces, a riptide of loss. I went to school with her since we were in kindergarten. <laughs> to everybody who loved to do it, who knew I loved it. What am I supposed to do? They won't let me dig. I'd love Paul Demartelli of Haddon Heights crossed the line. Picture, Brian, the picture of my, my brother and his wife. They were uh, on the 88th floor of Tower One having breakfast when the plane hit on the 92nd floor. Slipped past the police barriers on a bicycle to ask rescuers about his brother. And my brother stayed uh, helping people that were coming down from the 92nd floor, and we haven't heard from him since. As a project manager, Frank Demartini loved the tower's basement. Maybe when Tower Two collapsed, he realized to get out. They went down because he had a good half hour, 45 minutes that they went down below level, below level. I think there's a chance uh, in, the, uh, in the tunnel, in the, ch in, the, uh, in the channel. Parking area. Parking area, there might be a chance down there. Tonight, New York remembers the victims of terror. God bless the dead, as someone wrote, in soot on a car windshield. Tonight, these folks pray that God will help the survivors make it out alive. You never know, I mean, somebody might see him coming injured. He might be laying somewhere unconscious. I mean, it might, might look futile to the outside world, but what am I supposed to do? And when you speak to dozens, if not hundreds of people who come up to you and they want to ask you if we in the news media can help just, uh, just show the, the pictures of their loved ones in a phone number, uh, you wonder, you can hear the same question being asked in their own heads. What am I supposed to do when I know there's a loved one out there and he, he or she may be alive and I have to do something to help? Reporting live in Lower Manhattan, I'm Greg Coy, CNA News. Folks, back to you. And the silence has got to be deafening tonight for so many of those families, Greg. Oh, absolutely, especially when you hear, uh, just when you when you heard that, that, that one gentleman cry. I mean, we, he was talking about his fiance. They had planned uh, to get married sometime next year, and uh, he was even a member of the uh, of, of the uh, correctional officers who are volunteering their help uh, to, to, to to secure the perimeter around the World Trade Center site. Uh, he's doing his job, and he's also feeling the pain.